Hi, my name is Isaac. I'm the HPTC High Performance Technical Consultant based at York University. Um, I'm going to present the, this slide titled How to Get Started with Open Form at SharkNet. So, in this kind of seminar or gender kind of talk, I'm going to try to cover up what's the um, open form and what open form can do. And second thing is how to compile open form in SharkNet, or how you're going to get some help about the compilation in SharkNet. And thirdly, um, I'll present how to use ParaView for pre and post processing of the open form result or mass generation. And fourthly, I'll show you how to submit a serial job or sometimes parallel jobs in SharkNet environment. Finally, I will show you briefly how to compile user-defined local server under the compiled open form packages in your directory. So in general, in this seminar, I will try to explain how to use open form in Sharkly environment instead of explaining all the details about open form itself. So please note that this seminar for how to start open form in Sharkly environment instead of explaining the main feature or some details about open form. So if you have any question about open form itself, you can refer to the open form home page or website or user guide. You can download it from openform.org. So firstly, Introduction to the open form. So what open form can do and what's the program structure of open form. And lastly, things to know to run your job in SharkNet clusters. Open form is a C++ toolbox kind of package for the development of customized numerical solvers and pre and post processing utilities for the solution of continuous mechanics problems including computer computational fluid dynamics. Um, I've been in this kind of computational fluid dynamics for many years, and I noticed open form is growing up. Um, I'm not sure you know, how many people actually stick with open form for their solid mechanics or other types of problems. The most kind of majority kind of users I can, I've been seeing so far is using this one for computational fluid dynamics. So as you may see in the figures below, um, OpenForm can generate a mesh and run this kind of certain model for numerical modeling of the computational fluid dynamics. And it can also provide you some tools to post the process the result for uh, appropriate usages. And also, OpenForm, as the, uh, the description mentioned, it's been written in C++, and also it, this is open source packages, which means you can contribute your part to this server or packages, and sometimes you can modify their version for your purposes. That's why uh, I can see the community using this kind of open form getting increasing and increasing. However, um, this package is a very big package. It covers many different types of you know, problems, many different types of usages. So sometimes it's quite difficult to compile it. Sometimes difficult to find the right kind of information from the packages to modify or to change it. So as I showed here, this is basic open form structures. So open form field operation and manipulation C++ library is presented here. There are basically three big parts. One is pre-processing. Second is main part is solving. Third is post-processing. As you may know, computational fluid dynamics involves these three steps for any types of kind of uh, solvers. So you need to generate mesh or you need to set up some initial conditions or something like that for 
you know, your numerical uh, modeling, such as kind of partial differential equations, ordinary uh, differential equations, any types of you know equations you need to solve means some computational domain or uh, numerical input or boundary conditions that must be set up you know before solving anything therefore pre-processing involves some meshing or generating mesh or sometimes set up the, some environment for their kind of boundary conditions or initial conditions so open forms provide some utilities to do that especially block mesh or hexi and those kind of things has been used for uh, pro, uh, generating meshes and coming to the solving part as I listed below the figure you can see there are many different types of solving kind of solvers or equation solvers are provided as you may see there is a basic kind of you know, transport equations or something like that and compressible flows uh, direct numerical simulation DNS and sometimes financial issues I never touched this one before but financially and incompressible flow many cases multi-phase with the chemical reactions and combustion discrete method electromagnetic cases heat transfer Lagrangian stress analysis for solid mechanics there are many different categories for solvers and if you go into this kind of each folder within the servers they do have many different types of you know actual application solvers so ecoform, interform, many different types of um, application solvers are available in this whole package this is a very very big package and very very useful for general purpose of computational fluid dynamics and so on and if you want to check the, all the features here is a link www.openform.org slash features and standard servers dot php and last part is post processing um, in general this pre-processing post processing will be the problem in our shocking environment but anyway uh, post processing involves to check your answers or sometimes visualize your data or results for better understanding of physics so per view or per form we call it is provided or included in this whole package to help you to visualize or to check your answers um, before we heading to compiling this kind of package one thing you have to know is Sharknet cluster has a slightly different from your uh, individual PC or MacBook or Linux box um, Sharknet clusters has a login node and there are many different types of computing nodes attached to this kind of login node so you can only log into this kind of login node and then once you log in you're gonna submit your job through our SQ sub so that job must go and assigned to each computing node this is the procedure of using shotgun clusters however in general case of personal PC your uh, your program will be running on only single machine which has these two types of use kind of purpose actually merged into one machine so basically your notebook or laptop is simply login node and computing nodes as well therefore there's no need to uh, you know worry about uh, the functional difference of this kind of login node and computing node so there are two major things you need to keep in mind for compiling or running open form in sharknet first of all login node is not for running a job in sharknet clusters so you can submit any job in our login node or what that what does it mean you cannot run your code interactively in our login node that actually makes us, our login node is so slow heavy load on the login node which makes our login node a failure so it's not allowed in our shotgun environment therefore as I mentioned you should use SQ sub scheduler okay to run your job so this is the dif different point where you need to know to run your job in shotgun because if you simply refer to open form user kind of guide 
uh, tutorials, they do have only simply, for example, MPI run minus MP4 or something like that. Because that user manual is only you know, written for kind of um, standalone, we say, standalone types of machine, like your laptop or Linux box in your home, something like that. Therefore, it's not matchable or it's not fitting to our situation. So I'm going to explain how to do that. And secondly, Paraform. This is the kind of extension version of Paraview. Paraform is included in the OpenForm pack package. So usually if you install your OpenForm in your laptop, you don't need to worry about uh, cost processing. You just need to you know, execute Paraform, and the Paraform will bring up the Paraview. And then afterwards, you can see your results directly. However, Paraform requires many different graphical kind of components from the Linux distribution. And apparently, Sharknet Login Node doesn't have those kind of features. You can download many different third-party kind of packages for this kind of Paraform. And you may be able to, you know, making those kind of uh, Paraform working on our Login Node, but this is not supported. This is not allowed, basically because it actually makes a heavy load on the login node and also it actually requires to change some you know root kind of packages. Therefore in general Paraform is not compatible compilable in our login node, which means you have to use Paraview directly using some other visualization machine in our Shakunet environment. So Paraview must be used in this kind of Shakunet clusters. This is very important. So let's talk about some installation in Sharknet. Um, because it takes usually about a day, so I cannot show you full you know, installation process here. But I want to just make sure a couple of points here to make sure uh, compiles your packages successfully. So first of all, where can I download and, um, and put it, your downloaded packages? Uh, this is basic kind of a procedure you may follow. I can post it, this one later um, in our wiki page or something. Um, so first step, you need to create your main project directory. Okay. Um, as you may see, this is based on work directory. Um, as you may know, Sharknet has three different user mountable kind of location. One is a home, uh, second is work. The other is a scratch. You can use temp though, but basically three major kind of mounting point. Home directory is not used for running any job or uh, some other you know executable uh, activities. So you can you can't install this package in a home directory. You have to use work or scratch. However, work doesn't have expiration, but scratch has an expiration. Therefore. It's better to install the package in our work instead of Scratch if you want to keep it for less than more than four months. So anyway, that's why my basic main directory is located at work. You made a make directory, and you have to go to the directory and download it. Uh, you can download it in your PC, and then you can you know, transfer the file to our Shakunet uh, machines using SFTP or something. But sometimes you can simply download it in our login node using wget, so webget. So you know there is some uh, link for that. If you uh, type the wget get and this kind of uh, address and enter, it, it will allow to download that package. So as far as I know, if I check, I checked that out a couple of days ago. 3.1. Sorry, 3.0.1 is the latest version for now. So I downloaded it, and you have to extract those kind of downloaded files because downloaded file is in tar and zip. So you have to untar. So in this kind of way, using some command, you can use it if you want. And then uh, there is one uh, difficult point at this moment is the boost package. Uh, if you look at Open form installation page in their website. It's not that clear, and their all methodology is for standalone machine, which means you have a full authority to access any every uh, full authority to access every location in your machine. 
However, Sharknet machines are maintained by our uh, super user, which is just a system of administrators. So even myself doesn't have those kind of authority to touch any file which is not allowed to general users. So um, you can you can apply that methodology, which is explained in Open Forum web page, to install Boost. So here is the way you can install your Boost. I'm I'm going to show you here. So you can download it from the website, and then you can upload it into your account using SFTP. However, you can also copy my version. I put it in in my directory and make it open to everyone. So you can copy it to your and a third party directory and then you can untar it. Unfortunately, boost kind of package is not downloadable from the source force net. That's why we can use wget. I don't know why they blocked it, but we can do that for now. So you can download it directly from the boost website or you can copy mine. So one thing you have to know is because uh, one thing you have to know is you have to think about Boost because I'm going to post this process in our help wiki. You can refer to that anytime, but you have to remember there is a something about Boost you need to do. And you have to change a couple of you know, environment to uh, compile this code. Uh, usually open form is the open source code and then it is you know well compiled with GCC compiler. So as I showed you, this is a simple way because um, many times you may fail to compile it. So it's uh, better to put some environment into the uh, certain script which is controlling all the environmental kind of variables for open form. So go to this kind of packages directory and then you have to edit it. Um, I use the VI, but you can use Nano, you can use Emacs, whatever, it doesn't matter to edit the text. As you may know, Sharkana has module systems and Sharkana Intel compiler and OpenFORM compiler are loaded at default. So we have to unload it first, and then we're going to load this kind of GCC and OpenFORM file. And the other thing I need to emphasize is about the location again. So in, gen, in original script, it has a home directory, like home equals home slash user, something like that. So you have to change it into the new home, and then you have to change all home setup to the new home. Just change home to the new home once you set up this kind of export at the beginning of the part of this bash RC script. Okay? So don't, don't install your package in a home directory. You have to install it at work or scratch, okay? And then, these are steps you need to change for boost setup. So, cgal.sh is located in this location, config location, and then using set, you can switch, or you can just log, uh, open this script and change this part, the boost system part, to the boost 1.55. Uh, underscore zero, something like that. It doesn't matter using this SED or not. The same thing, you have to change the make files as well. You have to change make a CGAL, which is located in third party packages, and then uh, change boost the system to this way. Because boost the system uh, in our shotgun machines, we have a slightly different configuration right now from uh, the general setup. So you have to change this one appropriately. So again, you don't need to memorize any details at this moment. One thing you have to know is, aha, uh -huh, I need to do something about Boost before compilation. And then refer to my kind of help wiki something, and then you can compile it afterwards. Um, you have to have a right environment for OpenForm uh, running. So you have to have GCC compiler and OpenForm, OpenMPI GCC compiler uh, uh, together uh, before you're running your job because we are using module system. Once you compile your open form using GCC and OpenMPI GCC, then you, your kind of running running application requires library linkup 
uh, with those kind of things. Therefore, you have to load the GCC and something like that. So for that, it's easy to do is using some you know alias here, or you can use some script something like that, or you can use some alias in your um, dot bash LC, making the alias and something like that. So whenever you call o OF301, and then it's gonna roll load this kind of you know environment is set up and then you can run your job. I'm gonna show you this one once I once I come to my demonstration. So as I mentioned module list has to be changed. This is the the top is the default Intel and Open MPI and bottom is the things um, you need to get for Open MPI. So I'm uh, sorry, open form. So of 301 if this is my alias and then it changed once you set up you can check it out by module list and some environmental variables okay but one thing I need to make sure is you need to load this situation to use open form whenever you logged in so whenever it's not one time when you open a new shell you have to do it again open a new shell you have to do it again okay this is very important because and also that's a very common mistake uh, why my code doesn't run because you didn't load it because you load it before but you forgot to load it one more time then you log it out one more time and once this all setups are done you can go to this kind of directory and submit a compilation because as I mentioned compilation itself takes longer time so you have to submit a job for the compilation so sqstop is this is the command we're using for scheduler submitting so minus r is the time runtime two days and o is log file which is the kind of screen output capturing and minus e error any error signals goes to this kind of direct uh, files and then all w make is the uh, the script to run whole package compilation so okay this is my Mac terminal okay so I do SSH okay and then if I show you I shall see as you see here is this uh, I'm, I'm doing something so I have two different packages there so I do have only a setup to source this kind of bash LC therefore if I open this kind of bash LC which is the environmental setup for open for itself as I've showed I showed you module unload, okay, Intel OpenAPI, and module upload GCC, and this kind of the setup at the beginning of the script, and I set up new home, right, uh, which is Scratch and Isaac, and then I changed all home kind of uh, setup, changed it into the new home. Okay, to avoid any mistake there. You can see that, right? So it's been changed everything. And then if I do, because I have to have this many alias, if I do of OF31 S which is the package I installed in Scratch. Oh, before that, sorry. Let me show you the current load module list so you can see there is Intel and OpenMPI are loaded right but we need GCC and we need OpenMPI for GCC so if I do this one this kind of alias will hit this kind of alias setup source and this kind of things you can do it manually but it's always better so if I hit it Okay, and then if I check it, my module, you can see that it's been changed. 
to the GCC and Oakland the agencies. And also, that environment to actually bring up some open form related variable setup, like uh, this way. You can see that, right? So, by those kind of alias, you can reduce many, you know, repeated kind of command line um, execution can be saved for a uh, convenient way. Okay. And then, if I move to I can show you the boost. The boost is installed here. As I mentioned, um, as you can see, it's been changed properly using a CD command I showed you, right? So it's been compiled successfully. Now, how are we going to use uh, ProView for mass generation, all the things? Okay, that's the thing. Um, this is kind of very basic tutorial test case, um, lead-driven cavity case. Uh, you can see the website there for reference and make some directory, copy, all those things actually explain to that uh, URL. The one thing I want to show you is actually at the final, you can find that there is a three different kind of you know directories there. I'm going to explain this one later. And then what you have to do, you have to generate the mesh. Uh, when you generate the mesh, we're using blank mesh. I, I use blank mesh. There are different ones though. I use blank mesh. Uh, Blank mesh actually generating bash, but you have to run this one on this directory. Okay, you have to go. Well, you can use some other options, but uh, more convenient and simple way, go to this directory and run the blank mesh, and that will generate the mesh for you. So blank mesh result will show you in this way many different information. You can see how many cells, how many blocks, what kind of boundary conditions, those kind of things. Uh, boundaries you have, uh, patches, those kind of things you can see. Okay, as I showed you in this cavity directory, we have three different folders or directories: zero and system and constant. Each uh, directory has their own features. So, directory name of zero has contains some initial values, some boundary conditions or for all variables, and constant has some mesh information as well, and system has some time steps and numerical schemes, what kind of uh, controls you're going to use, those kind of things uh, in there. So please look at your user guide or some manual for you know further um, usages. And briefly, there are the three things. And once you, uh, here, here is another kind of mashing tools. I'm not going to cover this one here. Uh, this is the thing you have to do for ProView, because um, as I mentioned, in general case, if you install your open form, your MacBook or on your Linux box, you can simply type the open form. Then it will bring up your you know, uh, visualizing tools, and you can see your mesh or result, all the things. However, again, ShackNet doesn't support that in our login mode. So, this is kind of workaround you have to do. So, to use ProView and see your result, you have to go to the case directory, and you have to make a one empty file which has some case name. Totally up to you. You can use just one or whatever, but the extension must be open form or form. So better to say open form. Okay, cavity dot open form for example. And then this open form must be uh, read in ProView. I'm going to show you this one by demonstration soon, but in that way. And then um, there are a couple of ways you can you have to go through. But 
generally speaking, one basic big one is you have to make this file to see your result, okay? And then this is kind of things you have to do uh, for SharkNet facilities only. Then how can I get those kind of product view? Um, there are a couple of ways. First the thing is probably you can go to our website, sharknet.ca, and if you click the systems, there are a couple of lists for our visualization systems. So Power View is installed on our visualization machines, not on the log node. But the data is has been shared by visualization machine and Sharknet uh, storage systems. Therefore, you can see your results through the visualization machine instead of the log node. That's the different one. So you can probably go to the website and click this kind of icon to open your GUI shell for VNC or um, it's a little, little bit sh small. I'm going to show you soon. So referring to this our this help wiki in our Shakana help wiki, uh, you can use Tiger VNC or any other VNC server uh, client to connect it. Okay. And then you will get then you will get this kind of uh, Linux type GUI uh, on your VNC server and then open the terminal and hit the power view. You can see that. I'm going to show you soon. Then it will bring up the power view. Okay. So let me demonstrate this one using my uh, connection. I already logged in uh, for the the demonstration so this is tiger vnc okay so open the terminal okay and just type probably and enter and then it will give you the probably right however this is a you know general gui i mean the the uh, program so you have to you know read your data right so go to open um, there are many ways, but I mean, just type it, kind of, uh, work, Isaac. And go to open form. And Isaac 3.1, run, tutorial, incompressible. Echo and cavity, and then you cannot see any file there, right? So you have to change it, this one to all files. Then you can see there is an empty file I made it for probably only cavity open form, and okay hit, and then you have to choose. Okay, this file must be read with open form data format, right? The OK and apply, and I would say solely the color and wireframe. You can see my grid all the things. So this is cavity cases. It's not that simple, but it's okay to follow the procedure. So again, the most important step is you have to make an empty file to make us some working environment to be read in our Pravi. This is the mesh I showed you in Pravi. So you can check your uh, grid size and everything else you want. I didn't show any result here, but it's the same procedure to see the result. Okay, once you've done your running, and then you just make a, you know, just a, uh, connect the visualization server and open the GUI and Pravi and open the case kind of open form file using the problem. That's the way you have to do. Okay, then how to run the code itself. Um, again, you have to set up the right environment, you know, using the alias or command line, whatever you want, 
but you have to have a right module, right you know environment that's set up for running. Okay, so for the simple you know single CPU job, we call that a serial job. And single CPU job, you have to submit in this way. Ask yourself, this is our general uh, command to submitting a job. Submit a job. And running time, 10 minutes, for example, what kind of screen out you're going to capture, and what kind of errors you're going to capture, those kind of things. And echo form. Echo form, at this moment, once you load your right environment properly, echo form must be found, you know, just typing. So just give this kind of simple you know, script, sort of simple command line, will be enough to run your open form. Once you're done, you get this kind of uh, you know, result according to your time. And as I showed you, if there is any error message comes out, sometimes warning comes out, and then that will be captured in this file. And if there is any screen out log, screen out kind of prints can go to this log file. Okay, so you can see. We had only one, two, three directories, and then I made a cavity open form, just empty file for power view purpose, and then we got this kind of red color result by running this echo form for cavity cases. This is the way to run a single CPU or serial job in Sharknet. Uh, parallel job. It's not that different, uh, but you have to set up your parallel kind of uh, geometry, boundary condition, all the things. So following the dam break of fine tutorial case in this kind of website, you can see that. And input, input conditions and boundaries must be set properly. Uh, as I mentioned, this you know, general interest seminar is about how to start the open form and how to see your result, how to submit a job, or those kind of things only. So if you have a question about OpenForm itself, you can refer to their website, openform.org, or sometimes CFD online forum, you can go and ask some questions there. But briefly, you need to change your mesh information at uh, block mesh disk, and also you have to set your field, what's the time and all the things to starting, where to stop, and then the compose part, this is a utility to make a right uh, proper uh, MPI suitable uh, geometries for each processes. So you have to go through this kind of procedures before you uh, run anything. And same thing, same thing about the environment and all the things. And this is the kind of command line to submit a job for parallel run. So as you see, SQSub is again our job submitting uh, command and running time. Don't forget minus QMPI, which means I am running MPI job. Okay, and N minus N4, this is the number of CPU, a log file, error file, and interform is used to solve this situation. And this is the kind of parameter you have to set minus para. Um, once you hit it in this way, there's no surprise you will get some warning it kind of from our scheduler. Our scheduler will say, oh, this, your program doesn't look like an MPI or para program. But you can ignore that because uh, the formatting is slightly different. That's why our scheduler cannot read it properly. So it's OK. I tested it, and it works well without any problem. So as you see, once you submit your job, by checking the SQ jobs, you can see my code is running in MPI queue using four CPUs allocated this four nodes and ORCA. And this kind of command has been invoked. And then this is the result you can see. Each processor actually gave you the result. And log files and error files, you can see that. Okay. And then if I show you simply some more for your purpose, you can see that uh, some cases I did it. See, number of CPU, four. So I used the four CPUs. 
and then therefore each CPU generate the answer here in the processor zero to three. This is the outcome of the parallel running of the open floor. Okay. Um, long time ago, Sharknet officially made us some RPMs of open form and installed it as an official stack, which means we compile the code and make us some binaries and all the things and put it into our system uh, imaging. Therefore, everybody just can run it easily. However, based on our experience with uh, many users and for many years, we realize Every user has their own kind of features to add on, their own kind of purpose to modify, all the things. Therefore, in these days, we don't support any RPM types of official stack in our system-wide software stacks. Therefore, if you have any issue with the compilation, there are two things. You can try it by yourself following this procedure I showed you in this sli uh, slide, or I'm going to put it into the uh, help wiki so you can refer to the help wiki later, or you can submit a ticket simply. If you don't know how to do, just open a ticket and ask us to compile the code for you. But sometimes afterwards, for example, assuming you got your own version of open form in your directory at work or scratch or wherever, and sometimes you want to add your own transport equation solver or your own things you want to put on. So this is another topic you may want to know. So compiling local server, local server means your server, not the basic standard server from the package. Okay. So there are, here are a couple of steps you need to do. So as I mentioned, there is a need to compile your own version of a server attaching to open form. So first the thing you have to do, you have to make a local folder server, sorry, local server folder <laughs> uh, using the mkdil. If you're not quite sure about this kind of Linux command, uh, you can refer to any Linux uh, user seminar in our Shakuna website or help wiki. Um, you made a, again, you should have a right kind of environment before processing this kind of procedure. So assuming WM project DIL means open form main directory. So main directory, you're going to make a server kind of folders. Okay. And then the best way to modify certain server or you know put some new servers into the system is just copy the structure from the existing servers. So here I copy the you know incompressor piece of form kind of things into a new name, my form. You can see that, my form. So my form is the new server I want to add on this kind of open form package. Okay. Once you copy that, and then you have to change some names. This is only the examples, so I'm not going to implement anything here. So I just want to show you a different name of servers, how to be added into the open form packages. So modify the name properly. So go to the directory and then change the name from the piece of form to the my form C. And then within my form C, I also need to change the kind of descriptions and all the things. Application must be not piece of form anymore. It must be my form. And description must be say of you know this is solver for something like that, blah blah blah. But I just put my server. Okay, you just need to change that. So what I mean is open this file, open my form, okay, and then change something here. Okay. And also you need to change some maker files because your maker file actually has a piece of form that C. So you need to change the name properly, my form, blah, blah, blah. And within the directory of my server, I just do double clean to clean up anything. And just, I think this is not just make, double make. There's a small mistake, sorry about it. Double make and just make the file uh, compilation. And once it's done, if I try to find 
my binary, my form, you can see that it, that, it, that is successfully added to my binary directory of open form. Okay, so it's not that difficult. So just change the proper name after copying the structure from the existing server and just change the name and as kind of you know th th this is all you know practice examples but if you want to implement something you have to do it on there and do some uh, uh, mathematical or numerical implementation on there and you can do that okay um, this is it thank you